November 13, life-giving fruit. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Revelation 22, 2. The fruit of the tree of life in the Garden of Eden possessed supernatural virtue. To eat of it was to live forever. Its fruit was the antidote of death. After the entrance of sin, the heavenly husbandman transplanted the tree of life to the paradise above. The redeemed saints who have loved God and kept his commandments here will enter in through the gates of the city and have right to the tree of life. They will eat freely of it as our first parents did before their fall. The leaves of that immortal widespread tree will be for the healing of the nations. All their woes will then be gone. Sickness, sorrow, and death they will never again feel, for the leaves of the tree of life have healed them. Jesus will then see of the travail of his soul and be satisfied when the redeemed who have been subject to sorrow, toil, and afflictions, who have grown beneath the curse, are gathered up around that tree of life to eat of its immortal fruit that our first parents forfeited all right to by breaking God's commands. There will be no danger of their ever losing right to the tree of life again, for he that tempted our first parents to sin will be destroyed by the second death. Obedience to all the commandments of God was a condition of eating of the tree of life. Adam fell by his disobedience. Obedience through Jesus Christ gives to man perfection of character and a right to the tree of life. The conditions of again partaking of the fruit of the tree are plainly stated in the testimony of Jesus Christ to John. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Restored to the tree of life in the long-lost Eden, the redeemed will grow up to the full stature of the race in its primeval glory. The last lingering traces of the curse of sin will be removed, and Christ's faithful ones will appear in the beauty of the Lord our God, in mind and soul and body reflecting the perfect image of their Lord. O oh, wonderful redemption, long talked of, long hoped for, contemplated with eager anticipation, but never fully understood.